بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters in Islam I want to share with you a major a major sin that a lot of people commit during their wudu and perhaps they are ignorant about and this major sin الصحابة رضي الله عنهم fell into it until the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم called them out for it and warned them and gave them advice so what is this major sin that could be done in a wudu? The story, it was found in a story. And this is a hadith sahih found in Sahih Muslim. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were on travel. And they were returning to al Madina. So they left Mecca returning back to al Madina. And as they're on the way, they reached an area where there was water. And they hadn't prayed Asr yet. So they wanted to make wudu and pray al Asr. So time is running out. The hadith said, فَأَرْهَقَتْنَا صَلَاةُ الْعَصْرِ Time was running out. So they got to the water. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is behind the companions. And they made wudu quickly. To the point where when they got to the foot and washed the foot, they completed their wudu. They walked away. And the sahaba that were behind, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is behind, observed these companions that their heel, the heel, which is the bottom of the foot, was not covered with water. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he shouted aloud and he said, وَيْلٌ لِلْأَعْقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَيْلٌ لِلْأَعْقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَيْلٌ لِلْأَعْقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ He screamed it out to all these sahaba that had just made wudu. He said to them, وَيْلٌ Woe to the one who did not wash his heel completely during the wudu and he said it three times and the word wail when it is mentioned for a sin it makes it a major sin this is the definition of a major sin the definition of a major sin is when a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions a punishment or a curse of allah upon upon the deed that was committed like in this hadith Wail, and the word wail is a word of warning. And some ulama said that wail is a valley in the hellfire. So the hellfire is for the person who did not wash his heel correctly when making wudu. Allahu Akbar. In another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Asbighu al-wudu. He said, complete your wudu correctly. And then he said, Wailun, wailun lil-a'qabi wa butoon al-aqdami min al-nar. He said, Woe to the heel and the bottom of the foot from the fire. A person needs to make sure that his foot is washed correctly. And in another hadith, he said, Wailun lil araqib min al nar. Well, araqib, it's a plural of urqub, and urqub is the Achilles. It's that, uh, that ligament that connects the foot to the heel, that, that, that line. So you have the line, this is al araqib. And then you have the heel, and then you have the bottom of the foot. This must be, you must be aware of this matter when you're making wudu. Make sure that you cover the entire foot with water. And also, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he mentioned the heel, it is not limited to the heel. Any other limb that is partially washed and some of it is missed, then the same warning is to this person. So if a person washed his hand and missed his elbow, then the same hadith applies to him. And the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the heel because this is the most common place that is missed during wudu. This is why it was mentioned in specific. Also, a woman that puts on nail polish, it's halal to put nail polish, but a woman must make sure that it's completely removed in order to make wudu because nail polish it prevents the water from touching the nail and as a result if a woman made wudu with nail polish on then she has missed some of the limb that needs to be washed and covered with water subhanallah my brothers and sisters in islam these are companions companions that made wudu and they were on travel and they were about to miss salat al-asr and even and they would be tired even then the nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not give them excuse 
And he said to them, go and make your wudu again. The one who makes this type of wudu needs to make wudu again. So that he, in order for the wudu to be correct, and in order so he can pray with this wudu, subhanallah. Finally, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the ulama, rahimahumullah, they said, if this was the warning for the one who did not complete his wudu correctly, then imagine the warning for the one who does not pray altogether. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the one who doesn't make wudu and doesn't pray, doesn't attend al-masjid. Allah al-musta'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah azza wa jal to, to teach us and to give us the ability to perform our wudu correctly and to pray correctly. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.